Um, hello, this is Sean Woodell from Heavenly Soaps and Such, and today I am going to be making eczema dry skin soap. So I am trying to get myself a little organized. I did a Soap Talk Tuesday, so if you missed that, um, please check that video out, and it will be posted a little later, and I'm going to be kind of moving around some, uh, trying to get myself organized, but... Um, I'm going to get started making some soap. I have my recipe here in a little sleeve so that it doesn't get messed up. Uh, this is soap that was already super fatted, I mean already um, batched up. So I'm going to dump it in here. So what I did is I, I have these done ahead of time and I just keep them in the cabinet and then I don't have to worry about bringing everything out. And then I just make sure I get as much as I can out. And I don't wash these because there's just the oils in them. I use the same recipes in them over and over. Uh, my base recipe for most of my soaps is exactly the same. Um, it's just the essential oil blend or the um, spices or something that I add, the extra additives that I add that's different. So I'm going to leave that there to kind of um, keep my stuff in so it doesn't mess the table up. So I have to measure this one out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn these on low. Get the lid on them. And this is basically um, coconut oil, lard, soybean oil, stearic acid, and castor oil. Like I said, those are ready. Um, this has um, my stearic already in it. And what I did is I melted it in the pot and I forgot that I had already had the stearic acid in the containers the last time. So I didn't need it. So um, I realized it before I poured all the other oils in. So I just dumped it into one of the containers and let it cool back down. So it kind of made little chunks. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on. I need to make sure, sorry, I'm gonna step in the way in front of you. Um, I had used my drop cord, so some of my stuff's not plugged in. So I'm going to go ahead. I use this drop cord and just plug all three pots in. And just leave it like that. I'm going to put the lid on there so it'll get hotter quicker. Turn them on high. I don't cook on high, but I'm going to turn it on high. I'm going to... These are my water containers that I'm going to use. So, um, I'm going to get my tusks of silk, just put a little bit in each one, okay? I'm going to tear out the scale to zero, I'm not sure if you can even see that, um, what I'm doing here, okay? Alright, tear out that to zero. What I do is I go ahead and just get a, a whole a pitcher full. And I need one pound, um, one pound 13.6. So I'm just going to pour it in. Okay, there's one pound, 10, I need 13.6. Okay, and that's 0.7. That's not a big deal. So that one's ready. This, oh, let's use this one since it's the same. I don't know what happened to my other picture. I've got to find it. This is on zero, so it's already on zero. Okay. And 
a little bit of difference in water is not going to matter. Not a little bit. You don't want a bunch of difference, but because I mean, people do um, water discounts or at so I mean, you know, just a tad more or less is not going to matter. Now that, I went over a little too much for that, so what I do is I just put it in there like that. Alright, 113.7, so that's fine. Okay, and that was right. Yes, 113.7. Alright, so... I'll just save that water there in the sink. Now what I do is I use a bowl like this. Um, okay. Okay, now a spoon. The spoon is in case I get too much. The dryer sheet is to wipe out the bowl. If you wipe out the bowl ahead of time, the lye doesn't stick to the bowl as bad. But now I'm doing three batches, so after one batch, it will kind of start to stick. And I don't like to use the dryer sheet to wipe it out um, after I put lye in it because I don't want lye on this. It just goes in the cabinet back, and I use it over several times. All right, so. I'm gonna put my um, take this, wipe out my bowl, and the bowl's clean. This just kind of gives it a little coating to keep the lye from sticking. That there, I need 12 ounces, so I'm gonna tear out the scale. Okay, I'm gonna start adding. Okay, I went point one over. Add to a spoon. Oh, it's hiding. So what I do is I just take and I grab a little bit back and I just hold this over the bowl and I dump it out like that. All right. So that one's done. Twelve. Um, I just take it and pour it in. And anything that kind of sticks in a corner. I just bump in and <clears throat> you can see it's all gone. I try to do this quickly so that it won't start to, to grab things out of the air and stick to the bowl. Okay, almost there. Oop, a little bit too much, so I grab my spoon. It's back to zero. So I'm gonna just go. And you always want to add lye to water, and which is the sodium hydroxide. Never add the water to the lye. You want to get the lye diluted quickly, so you don't want to add a little water, a little water to the lye. You want to get it in there quickly so it's already in there and you don't have any kind of unnecessary reaction. Okay? Okay, there we go. Throw this in the trash. Up another one. I'm almost there. It's ooh, a little over 12. And that little bit of amount wouldn't probably really matter, but I use um you know the soap calc lie calculator. I'm gonna go ahead and put this away. Um so I, I definitely don't wanna you know go over have extra in the soap. I'm going to pour this in, and I just take my little spatula, get it off the edges, okay, immediately I run water in that, and 
get it rinsed out. I don't wash it because that's all I use those for is um uh, is for soaping. So all right, so now I get three whisk because once you and the reason you need three is that once you put it in there it grabs the whisk grabs the tuss of silk and see so it's all over the spatula so if you move it from one to the other you're, you're moving the silk and you really want that silk to stay in each batch because I don't want all that silk to go in this batch and then this one ends up with none so if you don't add tuss of silk you don't have to do that you can just use the same spatula you just move one spatula to the next one to the next one and that way you're not messing up so many containers I don't wash these pictures this is all I use them for I don't use them for anything else I rinse them out and then I put them right back in the cabinet now see this one the silk is already almost gone so That one too, so it tells you how hot it's getting. So once the silk's gone, make sure I did turn that on. I did. Okay. Um, and I know I had this sitting kind of to the edge of the table. Um, my little boy is not here and the girls are still in the bed. So, these two are done. I'm going to use this water to rinse them out. And what I do is go ahead and put them up. Now, some people may say, oh, well, you need to rinse them out more. No, they're out of reach. Nobody touches them. They're not used for anything else. The only time they'll be pulled out again is for this. But, if you feel the need to wash them up, by all means, please wash them. I am going to just pull these back because they are going to sit here. Um... And I'm going to kind of get them away from the edge. Actually, I'm going to put it in the sink. So just put them in the sink and I'm going to let these cool. I'm going to go ahead and get this other recipe ready. Uh, these are already um, heating um, up. And um, I have to go deliver some um, some soaps. I'm going to move my essential oils out of the way because I'm not going to need them for quite some time. Uh, I just had them out for the um, Soap Talk Tuesday. So I'm going to leave that because I can keep my stuff in it like this. I'm going to rinse this spoon off, put this dryer sheet back up. I'll still keep this um, water out for if I need it for anything else. So, I'm at a point now that I'm going to stop and go deliver some um, soap to a restaurant. They called me and said they really need it this morning before 10 o'clock. And it's right down the road, so I'm going to go deliver that and let this kind of do its thing, cool off and heat up some. And then I'm going to come back and um, I will finish the process. See you in a few minutes. Okay, I have <clears throat> everything um, melted and cooled down enough that I am ready to um, add the, the lye mixture into my oils. Um, I don't melt it all the way. Now, these melted more than this one because this is the last one I did. That's fine. That's up to you if you melt them all the way. The heat from the, pro the saponification process, and I'm going to be cooking it, so it's going to heat up nicely anyway. Is going to mix all this stuff in, so I'm not really worried about it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on low. And I'm going to, I have on my gloves, carefully pour this in. 
I immediately carry this over to the sink and rinse it out and I use that leftover water that I have in the jug up there waiting on the other two containers now um i use a stick blender and this is just a yard sale stick blender i paid like i don't really even remember i'm sure it wasn't more than four dollars but probably more like two or three but i anytime i find one i try to keep um about three on hand the one i'm using and two extras just in case one goes out i do not want to have to go to walmart and buy one at full price so I'm just going to go ahead and start stick blending this. And what that noise is, is that's the um, steric acid that's in the bottom of the pot that wasn't completely melted. And it's fine. It will blend in and melt. Um, it's not an issue. It's one of the ones that's harder to melt. And if you notice, let's see if I can sit that there without it falling. I don't want it to fall. Okay. I will show you this pot. If you notice in there, let's see if I can move this. I'm still batching oils, so I still have a lot of stuff out, but I wanted to go ahead. I was doing it, and then I said I'll wait on the soaps, but then I was like, that's ridiculous. I can go ahead and have these soaps cooking while I'm batching up soap on um, the oils, but you can see the steric acid is still in the bottom. Everything else is nice and melted. It is the one that is the hardest to melt, but going through the cook process, it will melt fine. I won't have any issues um, with it melting. Um, and as this kind of goes around, even that lard will melt. And I usually do kind of try to put the blender on top of it to get the chunks. But you can see it's melting. It's Alright, so now I'm kind of through with the chunks. Um, and with a hot process, you don't have to worry about the stick blender getting air bubbles because you're going to be cooking this for a long time anyway. Um, so it's not going to matter. Alright, so. Okay, I am back. It has been about, actually it's been a little longer than an hour. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with this pot. Set it there. Uh, you can see 
Got some water in there. Mix it together. I'm going to mix it. Stick into the pot a little bit. So I do have it on low. So you're going to keep an eye on that. Now I don't have gloves on now. I took them off. If you feel the need to wear gloves at this point, um, please put them on. Um, not sure if that's in your way. Uh, that's in your way. Okay. Um, but you just make sure that you get it all mixed back in. Nothing sticking in the corners or around the edges. And I just stir it really nicely. And then that one ready I wipe it off oh, I don't use separate utensils for these because every sorry about that everything is the same go on to this one you can see we're getting the kind of a Vaseline look Let's see if you can see that it's kind of a Vaseline look to it um, around the middle but now um, uh, if you notice here in the middle here still have a glob of soap that's not really cooking yet so I'm gonna stir that one up sorry about the noise just gonna scrape the sides you can see the soap that's sticking on it um just make sure you I always just cut it up some people take it out I don't I just make sure that everything is loose Nothing's down in there. I still feel a little something there that I want to take out. I don't know if it got something off the edge of the pot, but I want to take that out. Okay, so stir it all up nicely. Um, so I can already tell that the first pot's going to be um, ready the quickest, and then this one, and then of course this one will be last. And you can see the soap, the white soap here. I hope you can see that. So that tells me it hasn't that hasn't really started cooking yet. But you can see this over here is has a Vaseline type look. Everything is nice and creamy. I'm gonna stir this in. Just take my um, take knife and kind of cut it up because I want it to really get incorporated in there, so it'll go ahead and cook faster. Mix it all together. This one I'm having to stir the most because of the part that's not cooked. Okay, I'm gonna scrape the sides, make sure there's nothing sticking. And this one's ready. Okay, again, scrape it off, push it back down in there. This goes back in the pitcher that I'm using it goes back on everything's still on low and it has been um, an hour and 15 minutes um, so I'm gonna let them cook probably about 30 more minutes so I'll probably bring you back at about 11:15, um, 15 uh, which is 30 minutes in the meantime I'm working on some YouTube videos so make sure you check out uh, the other videos that I have created and I'll bring you back in 30 minutes. Okay, I'm back. Um, I did stir them one time and I forgot to uh, videotape it. Uh, they were cooking a little bit too fast for me, so I did all of the lids sideways. And I just put that one back on. I haven't stirred them this time. So it's kind of turning a little bit of different colors on the top. Um, so I'm going to put the lid back on. But I'm going to give it a quick stir. And that's just where it was kind of drying out on the top some. Um, I'm just going to mix it in. This is getting close to, um, to done. And if it's not quite done, um, 
with the cure time that I, I let it dry out, um, it, it finishes it because I don't use it right away because I want it to dry out enough that the bar doesn't just evaporate almost, melt really quickly in the, the shower. But it should be ready to use, if you cook it long enough, it should be ready to use immediately. But like I said, I don't really worry about it being all the way done because I'm not using it immediately anyway. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on that. So, um, but you can see it has like a, it has still has that Vaseline type look on it. Um, the top is of course drying, um, hardening, but it's getting a little too cool on the top. Let's throw that back in. And what I do is I just make sure that I'm scraping the edges. And if I have any pieces that are on the edges, I just stir them back in and um, mix them in. So. the top away I can see that it's getting that Vaseline look and this was the last pot that I did so this one sorry about the noise uh, it is coming along nicely and I mean what I do is I don't sit usually sit in here with the soap and just sit I usually go do other things uh, but today I have been working on YouTube videos, so I just brought the laptop in here because a lot of times if I get on the laptop working, I tend to forget that I have soap cooking uh, and I've let it go too long. So if I'm sitting here like this with my laptop and my phone and I can... Um, work on uploading YouTube videos while everything cooks. So it is now 12 11 so the soap has been cooking since 9 30, 10 30, 11 30, 12 30 so I'm going to um, go ahead and get my my molds ready and basically getting a roll, mold ready for me is just a matter of pulling out my molds. I'm gonna need three of them. Um, let's pull out three. And I do have um, six. Um, Cause I used to try to do that many and it just was too much. I think I'm gonna move to four though cause I think I wanna do four at a time. But basically, just put these, see if you can see me. Okay. Basically just put the ends in it where it hangs up on the top. Now all of them don't do that um, because I cut them short. That's okay. I can recut them, but I just don't really, it doesn't matter. So I don't really care about it. Um, use these and put them down in here. You get a lot of questions about these liners. These are shelf liners from Walmart, the same color on this side as that side. Um, they have held up really nicely, as you can see. Nothing looks wrong with it. Um, it looks great. So um, I have been able to just use them over and over and over again. Um, they wash out great in the sink. Um, you can throw them in the washing machine. You can put them in the dishwasher if you want. Um, the only thing with the dish, you know, the dishwasher is if it has too much suds on it, it's not good for the dishwasher. But put those in it, and these are extras. And make sure you can see okay, this one. I'm not gonna stick it. Oops, my little things fell in. Okay. 
just take my fingers and kind of put them down in there and it works great. Now, like I said, the only thing is these I will lift out with the little tabs. These doesn't have the little tabs, so I have to lean the mold up and just kind of flip it out. But it still comes out easily. It's not a big deal. So there, my molds are ready. Um, I'm going to um, move them out of the way, though, because I don't want to leave them there. Um, they're kind of in my way, so I'm going to set them back here. And um, I'm going to need to go ahead and get my super fats ready. So I'm going to keep them in. I may not have any ready. I may have to get some ready. Okay, the way it looks, I only have one jar left. Uh, these are the jars I use for the super fats. And um, some people use super fats, some people don't. It's kind of up to you. Um, some people add the super fats into the rest of the, the batch. I don't. I zero super fat and I add my super fats at the end. Um, I add coconut oil, olive oil, glycerin, vitamin E, shea butter, cocoa butter. I think that was it. And I just measure them out, keep them in these jars, and I keep these all under the cabinet. And when I need them, um, I just pull them out. I don't have to measure them every time. But as you can see, I'm down to one jar. Therefore, I'm going to have to go ahead and um, and do these. I don't wash them. I just um, keep them in the cabinet and just close the lid back. And when I need them again, um, you can see this one had oatmeal in it. When I need them again, I just open them up and fill them back up and I don't, don't worry about washing them. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one because I want to fill this one back up and I'm going to actually add my I'm going to actually, I'm trying to think how I really want to do it. Um, I actually like adding. Mama. Yes. Mama, yeah, are you going to be um, sweet boy? I use one cup. So I use two of these. Are you going to be a sweet boy? I'm not going to hear any arguing carrying on. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go see if they're about done with what they're doing. Can you play with me? Oh, man. Yeah, go tell them they can play with you. Alright, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water to this. Stir it around. Um, just enough to get it wet. I'm not adding a bunch. I'll show you the consistency just to make it kind of like an oatmeal that you would eat. Okay. I'm going to give it a minute to sit. I have it all mixed so that I don't want any dry going in. Um, okay, I'm just going to mix in my super fats. And, and I was doing the oatmeal in the super fats, but I kind of get, you know, kind of feel like it just soaks up the super fats and. 
it doesn't benefit the skin as much as I would like it to. Mama. Yes. All right, as long as y'all gonna be good. Okay. I'm gonna give you a chance. I don't wanna hear you hollering and carrying on out there, babe. I got the window open so I can hear everything. Yeah. Okay. Mom, you got, you got, you got, you got a boy. <laughs> I am. Mommy, sweet baby. All right, I'm go play. Baby, but I'm, I'm your sweet baby, but I'm, but I'm daddy's boy. Oh, your mommy's sweet baby and your daddy's boy. That's fine. But I, but I'm the girl because I ain't your because I ain't, I ain't your girl, son. I'm just my daddy. Yeah, you're not a girl. That's why you got a daughter, too, don't you? I got a daughter, yes. Yeah, my daddy's my son. No, you're your daddy's son. Are you my daddy's son? Yeah, you are your daddy's son. Yeah. And you are on Honor's Grim's daughter. I'm Honor's mother. Mm -hmm. All right, go play. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put my super fats in. So I'm just going to dump them across the top. No! And he's going to holler and talk. And... All right. No! I'm going to put this in. So, and what you can do is subtract some of the water from the beginning. Um and put in there. I don't really like to do that because I feel like I'm taking away water from the lye because this water actually soaks into the oatmeal. That That's kind of up to you. Um, but then I just take it, stir it in. You want to get the oatmeal everywhere. So you're stirring it. And it's going to change the consistency some because it's making it a little thicker. And I do have a clump of coconut oil there that's going to melt. What I'll do is I'll let it sit and then I'll stir it again just to make sure everything melted and got mixed all the way through the soap. So I'm going to put the lid back on and let that cook for about 30 more minutes but I will, I will come back and check it but I am going to go ahead and start um, getting the rest of these super fats ready and jarred up and I'll bring you back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I let this cook a little bit longer. Um, so it it's getting a dark, to me it's just a, a cooked look. It looks done. It um, has a brown, like a, not an oatmeal look, but anyway, it's just got that brown look. So that's just kind of the look it has when I know that it's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off. to make sure I give it a good stir Get everything off of the edges and let it cool down because I'm going to let it cool down a little before I add the essential oils. Um, and again, I already have those ready in some containers. I'm going to leave the lid kind of like that to let it start cooling. And as soon as I feel like it's at the right temperature, usually around 160 degrees, then I will bring you back and... I will add the essential oil and I will go ahead and mold it, that, that batch. Okay, see you in a few minutes. Okay, I have just removed the soap pot, um, the crock pot from the crock base. 
and I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off. I'm going to give it a good stir. And then I'm going to check the temperature on it just to see. And, and some people say you don't have to do this. Um, okay, it's reading at 180. But what I do is I like to, if I put the essential oils in, when it's too hot, it gives off some fumes and it doesn't bother me, but my husband says it bothers him and I have to turn the exhaust on. And So I really don't like to um, put it in any quicker than, um, than I have to. So I'm going to let that sit there and if you... The more you stir it, the more it cools off. But now I don't usually stand there and, um, and stir it. But I am going to give it a spin like this and get it in the edges. I'm ready to get this soap in the pot. I've had too many things going on and it just took longer than what I wanted. It is now 1.30. So, I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and remove that lid. Everything's off now. Let me just pump that off and then I'm going to give this one a good stir. What I really want to do is just make sure that that oatmeal is incorporated throughout the whole soap and there aren't any lumps. Um, This one I know I'm not quite through with, but I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and I don't know if you can even see what I'm doing. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a nice good stir. Now I'm going to put the lid back on it. Alright. This one, like I said, needs a little bit more work. It's just not, the oatmeal's not incorporated the way I want it to be. I don't really want any lumps. And I probably need to do a little bit more research. I always do the oatmeal, but I've just kind of been playing with how to do it. Sometimes I put it in my super fats, but I feel like it just absorbs the super fats, which might not be the case. Uh, and I found that if I put it in my lye water, to me it uses up some of the water, which I guess that's okay. Um, so this way I added extra water, and I think I did this before, but I think it ended up taking longer to cure the water out, so, or dry out, not necessarily cure, but um, I think that maybe if I... Just do a little bit more research about how to do the the lye, I mean the oatmeal. I might be a little happier um, with the results. Doing it with the water at the end like I just did creates kind of clumps. It's almost like it starts cooking. Yes? Okay. Isn't that what you said? Yeah, after they finish. They want to. Okay. Now ask them how much more they have to do. Okay? Huh? What? Ask them how much. Uh, excuse me. What do you say? Not what, but. What did you say? I said see how much more they have to finish. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. That little what he came back with sounded a little like not nice. So, so anyway, I have the um, I'll let that go ahead, and cook some more, not cook some more because it's off, but let it kind of cool down. This, and we'll give us a quick stir, see what the temperature is again. 
still running 180. It's a little over 180, but now it says 179, 75. It's still not where I want it. I'd really like for it to be at least 160. I mean, at least 170. And that shows 180 again. So, I'm going to leave that sitting there. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Like I said, this is the essential oils that um, I've already measured out. I like to take this one to kind of wreck them out um, and make sure that I get all of that juicy goodness of those essential oils out and into the the um, soap. I think I might just go ahead and do this one for the sake of doing it. I don't want to have to do another video again, another segment of this to patch together. I might have to break this one in two because this is taking a long time. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and do that. It says 180 still, but it's it's exactly 180 now. Um, so let's go ahead with it. All right. So what I do is I usually just kind of pour it down in there. Do that. Get it out. Lay that there. I put the lid back on this, and I put it right back in the container where I have my jars of essential oils that are already measured out. Um, start stirring this. I go slow because I don't want to splash these out. Oop, just splashed. And again, this is lemongrass essential oil, peppermint essential oil, lavender essential oil, and um, tea tree essential oil. And you'll know that you've stirred it enough when you quit seeing like a slimy, it's kind of like a slimy film. And it's got a shiny look to it when it loses that shiny look and that little film appears to be gone and it just looks like soap. Then you know... Um, you stirred it enough. Make sure you can see what I'm doing, okay? Okay, now see it, it just it's kind of like there's no liquid left, there's no shininess left. And what I do want to do is get all the edges down because I want to make sure that every bit of the soap has the essential oil benefits any part of it not to have those great things for your skin and that's one reason why I use the essential oils because of those um, properties that you know, it can help with different um, things you have going on with your skin you can't really make any claims but um, if you look online, there are certain uh, essential oils that are good for certain types of things. So you can incorporate those. And you can kind of, I don't know if you can see that little smoky kind of stuff coming off. That's the essential oil. And I can already feel it in my lungs, in my chest, in my head. It's already kind of hitting me. But, but it doesn't bother me. To me it feels good. It's like invigorating. It's... I can tell it's beneficial, but now he says he, he's real sensitive, and he says he, he gets a headache. So, I usually turn the fan on. Let me do that. Oh, we have a guest bath right here off of the laundry room, and I usually close the laundry room door, open the window, and I turn the fan on in the bathroom. And that way it. Okay, now, what I do here is um, I use a towel on my hip, 
because it will burn me. I don't dip. I'm not a dipper. Dip it all out. I like to pour. So what I do is I pick the pot up. And I'm going to make sure you can see this. You can. And I use one pot hand towel on one side and the other towel on my hip. I make sure my liner's in there right. It is. And I just kind of bend down and start not really pouring, but scooping it out where it kind of pours and you scoop at the same time. But I'm not spooning. But you can do that. It doesn't matter. Um, one day, I'm sure, I will be spooning because it is kind of hot, heavy, and hot, and um, so it can be a little tricky. But here comes my little guy again. I'm sorry about that. He has not had a nap, and he is not in the best way today, this afternoon. He's tired. He doesn't want to go to sleep, but... He needs to, but anyway, he'll go to bed early tonight and he'll sleep well tonight, so I'm trying to tolerate a little of him and realize that he's tired. And we all get, get a little grumpy when we're tired. So, alright, so what I do here is I scrape out what I can get and I try to distribute it evenly in the mold. Then I take my cake knife. And I run it around and I get all, everything I can get out. I don't leave like a bunch in the pot. Um, I just kind of scoop it different places. in the sink to cool. When it cools, I'll scrape it out and I'll add that extra to my um, my soap um, scraps container for rebatching soap. I used to just fill it with water and let the water do that, but then I hated to put all that down the drain going into the septic. So I just started um, scraping out, scraping it out, um, and I found these neat little things. I'll show you real quick. I found these little things at um, True Value Hardware, and it works great for just scraping. And this little thing here gets right down in the corner, and you can just scrape, and it scrapes a lot of that soap out. And I just throw it in, like I said, you can throw it in the laundry. I, I do that sometimes, but now that I'm really scraping it out a lot, I just scrape it like that and put it in my rebatch container. All right, now what I do is I try to get everything even because when I cut it with my cutter, my bud cutter, I want everything to be even. I don't want to have some bars that weigh a lot more. Um, and you can't help that a little, I mean, somewhat you can't, uh, but you can try to do your best to get it the way they're even. I just don't want one bar to be, and I'm not sure that it would be, but one bar to be seven ounces and one to be five. So I kind of fluff up the top a little, and what I'm doing is folding in these crusty looking things down under. Now, once again, this is HP. Mine is not real fluid when I pour it. It's not real stiff, but it's not real fluid. So I'm not going to get the a look that's real smooth and glassy on the top, which is not what I look for anyway. I like the rustic look. But that's up to an individual soaker. What I do is I pump it off. And these are wood molds that my husband and I made. Um... So, I'm going to sit it on the floor, bump, I'm not sure if this is necessary, but it's just something I've always done, and habits are hard to break. Um, my liner is a little low, so, 
Now, what I do is I take a piece of plastic, and this is just a plastic uh, trash bag. I think it's actually a bag that something came in that I ordered. I lay it on the top, and I just use my hand and kind of make sure that it feels like it's the same height all the way across. Okay, now I just take it back off. Um, like I said, I like the little rustic look, so I take my spoon and rust it back up. You don't have to do that. And I just make sure it's not over the edge. It's like I said, some parts, the it's a little um, low. All right, I'm through. Um, thanks for watching. This is Sean Woodell at Heavenly Soaps and Such. I'll bring you back when I cut it.